Boxing, a captivating sport enjoyed by its fans across the globe, offers a thrilling spectacle to behold. The adrenaline pumping punches and intense clashes that unfold within the ring consume the attention and it becomes easy to forget the dangers and risks associated with the sport's demanding physical nature. And even though the sport has its rules to keep fighters protected, there are instances where the boundaries are pushed beyond limits, leading to unforeseen circumstances. Regarded as a rising force within the welterweight division, Maxim Dadashev embodied the promise of a young athlete with so much boundless potential, he was projected to be the next major sensation in the division. However, fate would have a different path in store for him. On July 19, 2019, Dadashev stepped into the ring to face off against Subriel Matias in what would become the last match of his career. With every ounce of determination coursing through his veins, he fought with unwavering courage until his very last breath. This is the tragic story of Maxim Dadashev, a young man whose journey in the world of boxing was cut short, leaving behind a legacy of unfulfilled potential. Dadashev, also known as Mad Max, was trained by former world champion Buddy McGirt in Oxnard, California. Dadashev would go on to win his first 13 professional bouts, 11 of which came through knockouts. He made his professional debut in April 2016 against America's Darren Hampton, winning by a first round knockout. Dadashev won his first championship in June 2018 when he won the vacant WBC North American Boxing Federation light welterweight title following a 10th round stoppage of Colombian boxer Darles Perez. Next, he would go on to defend this title against Antonio DeMarco, a former WBC lightweight champion. Dadashev defeated DeMarco via a 10 round decision win. After his win against DeMarco, Dadashev started to garner waves in the welterweight division. He set his eyes on the top prize, the Federation's junior welterweight belt held by Josh Taylor at the time. But to challenge Taylor, he had to defeat another fighter, Puerto Rican boxer Subriel Matias. The fight was set to be an IBF lightweight title elimination bout, with the winner facing the champion. On July 19, 2019, Dadashev fought Matias at the MGM National Harbor in Oxon Hill, Maryland, and the events that followed would forever leave the boxing world in shock. From the opening bell, Matias immediately took the fight to Dadashev. Behind an occasional jab and tight guard, he went to work. Dadashev, however, would employ the total opposite, as his approach was to box and move. After a slow first round, Dadashev got into a groove in the second and third rounds. He repeatedly landed hard left hooks on Matias, capitalizing on his weak defense. Matias took back momentum in the fifth round, assaulting Dadashev's body. At this point, Dadashev started to slow down and became a stationary target. Body attack this round, like you mentioned earlier, Tim from Matias. And that's why you see, see Dadashev slow down right now. You can see the confidence rising up here in this back half of round number five. Very, very good round for Matias. By the time round eight ended, the pressure and bodywork started getting to Dadashev who made his way back to his corner with a slow, deliberate pace. Still has room to rise, but thus far, I haven't seen it. I'm really not really as offensively, you know, effective as he's been the last three or four rounds. Nice little turning from that I share. That's what Buddy wanted to see more of. That's the best way to fight a pressure fight. The intensity of the fight came in the ninth and tenth rounds. Both men traded one explosive shot after another. Still, Matias appeared to do more damage. 
This was the first fight in Dadashev's career that he had gone beyond 10 rounds. By the 10th round, Dadashev started fading as he began to take a lot of hits. Has been all Matias and so strong with the body attack. Yes, he can't do that, Tess. He cannot do that. He's fighting Matias's fight right now. The end of the match would, however, come in the 11th round when Dadashev's trainer threw in the towel, pleading for the referee to stop the match. This action was not well received by Dadashev, who insisted on continuing the fight. He protested but his trainer believed he had seen enough. Okay, I'm going to stop the fight. Max, I'm going to stop it. Max, you're getting hit too much. You're getting hit too much, Max. Please, Max, please, let me do this, okay? Okay, come on, Max, please. Come on, you, you got to be honest with me, Max. Stop, 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 stop it now. That's it. That's it. On his way back to his dressing room, Dadashev began to show symptoms of head trauma. A few minutes later, he collapsed and had to leave the arena on a stretcher. Dadashev was taken to the University of Maryland Prince George's Hospital Center, where he was diagnosed with a subdural hematoma and underwent emergency surgery to stop the bleeding in his brain. Doctors at the hospital said Dadashev had suffered severe brain damage. He was then placed in an induced coma for the swelling in his brain to subside. However, Dadashev's condition would only get worse on July 23rd, four days after his fight. A statement from Dadashev's wife revealed that the fighter had died. Dadashev's body was sent to his hometown of St. Petersburg, Russia. The Boxing Federation of Russia launched an investigation into the tragedy and pledged to support his family. Dadashev, a boxer from St. Petersburg, Russia, had a dream to become one of the best in his division. He fought courageously, aiming to become a champion, and came incredibly close to achieving his goal. Unfortunately, tragedy struck just when he was on the cusp of fulfilling his dreams, and he lost his life in a heartbreaking turn of events. Dadashev's story will forever be remembered, adding to the somber chapters of boxing's history.